right. Welcome. We are recording. We've got a chance to talk with Tylan today uh, for promoting a new mic. New mic. It's not a new mic. It's not a new mic. <laughs> it's a new show. Showcase. New show. Yes. Watch out. Exactly. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, new show is going to be right here, Soul and Spirits, uh, in the Low Tones room. Um, so really excited to have you here. How are you doing today? I'm excited to be at Souls and Spirits uh, Brewery. I really like this. Uh, I remember I was here to uh, meet somebody, and it was before I even drank beer, but I still like the venue. I like the atmosphere. I like how it's ducked off right in, the, right in the, whatever you call this part of, of downtown. <laughs> right. Um, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. How, how are you doing? You know, I'm doing pretty good. Back in these comedy streets. Uh, yeah, something like that. Something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, no, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, yeah. Um, like I, I think I've already told you the only thing more mentally unwell than me doing stand comedy. Mm -hmm. so. I think it was Jerry Seinfeld that said, if you had the choice, if you had a backup to be able to do anything different, you wouldn't truly pursue comedy yeah. if you had a choice not to. Yes. So it's a good segue. Mm -hmm. um, how long have you been on the scene and what made you want to start this masochistic thing? So I've been working in the comedy business for over a decade. Uh, I started doing comedy uh, in a stand-up form technically three years ago. Um, I was always used to being on stage. I was in local theater and whatnot. And I'll tell you, the actual re the actual thing that started up my stand-up career, because I had no idea how stand-up worked. I thought stand-up was just comic view. I mm. thought stand-up was just, you know, Netflix. I thought that's where stand-up comedy happens. And at comedy clubs, you get, you know, known enough from just doing whatever you do and you get booked. But I was at uh, the Hot Song Cafe at something called Jazz Brunch. And uh, I was sitting with a lady, and John Miller came and uh, flirted with said lady and was telling her about... <laughs> John Miller my... flirting? No. Never. John Miller flirting. John Miller gets active. Shout out John Miller. Shout out to the Hot Song. Shout out to... Yeah, he was spitting some game in a show. He, mm -hmm. he came and saw me at Memphis Made. He was mm -hmm. spitting some game in a, a, Come on now. At, a, at a young lady there. <laughs> Yes, but yes, yeah, so, but yeah, John Miller uh, is what got me started to open my comedy. Just hearing him tell someone that open my comedy existed made me go out. So like the first six to eight months of my stand up comedy career, I was only at Hot Tone. That's wow. that's where I was doing stand up comedy. So I, I really got uh, really got thrown to the wolves. I did not realize that there was other places to do comedy. <laughs> I think the the second place I ended up going to was uh, Lamplighter, but yeah, shout out shout out to John Miller, man. Yeah, absolutely. No, uh, High Tones where I did my very first set too. Mm. Yeah, this it was, and it would have been last January, and I wore a blazer. Uh huh. <laughs> was it, <laughs> I wanted to look official. Was it like was it a showbiz blazer or a Hillary Clinton blazer? Um. I don't think I'm self aware, like I'm aware enough of my style to answer that honestly. Mm -hmm. Like it probably was a Clinton blazer, but mm -hmm. I thought it looked stylish and cool. You probably you know? did. You 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 pretty much you you be have your own your own style, your own flavor. That's a nice way to put it. Appreciate that. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so, who are some of your who you would say are your influences and some of your favorite comedians like now and of all time? Yeah, I'll say like um, all time uh, in in stand up comedy. Of course, you have your Kevin Hart, your Dave Chappelle, so forth and such and such. But actually, when I was younger, I used to go to sleep listening to uh, stand up comedy on Pandora Radio. So I would just look up. Kevin Hart Radio, and that's how I get like branched out to different uh, comedians. Like I was listening to Tony Roberts, I was listening to Donnell Rollins, I was listening to Robin Harris. Um, but like some current people, I really enjoy John Mulaney's uh, comedy. That's probably one of my favorite comedians right now. Um, but honestly, I, I just have a funny family. Mm. Like my mom, hilarious. My auntie, hilarious. My, uh, if my auntie gets drunk enough, she'll do like a stand up set just in the <laughs> just in the living room. So just shoot because I have very uh, I, I grew up in a house with um, seven women. So a lot of theatrics. So, you know, they had karaoke mics and whatnot. Nice. So they would just they just grab the karaoke mic, start jamming, may, maybe take a take a, 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 a random pop song and just turn it into jazz. I love that. I. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. I don't think so. I think that was necessary. I freaking love karaoke. Mm-hmm. Love karaoke. What What's your go to karaoke song? My go. <sighs> So I'll say my go-to karaoke song, I'll either do Don't Worry Baby by the Beach Boys, or if I'm feeling snazzy, I do uh, this um, Bobby Womack song, If You Think You're Lonely Now. Mm. But that's a very long song. Mm. So I, I don't do karaoke enough, but I guess down, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do all too well, the 10-minute version, mm-hmm. oh. Taylor's version. They, they'll have that at the karaoke. They'll have like the lyrics and everything. One hundred percent. Wow. Yes. Taylor's really. I didn't understand. I didn't know how uh, big Taylor Swift was until like this year, or, like the end of last year. I did not because realize. Because of me. It was because of people like you. Yes. <laughs> um, but I don't even. I don't remember what it was. I think when I saw like a a, a mass amount of people hating on her, and then an, uh, another mass of people going to war. Taylor Swift fans are very battle tested. Yeah. um, I don't pretend it's healthy, Mm -hmm. deeply parasocial. Mm -hmm. Um, Me and my, my sister and I both had to use our therapy time to talk about when she was dating Maddie Healy. Like we were, we were, we needed to talk about her love life because it was dysregulating us so much. So like, I'm not pretending it's normal Mm -hmm. at all. But. I mean, you know, you, everybody needs a champion because parasocial or not, everybody on earth has someone that's a champion for for them or their demographic of person. It's why people like Muhammad Ali and Michael Jordan became so popular because you see somebody at the pinnacle, whatever their craft is, and you see either their bravado or their personality or their dedication, and you say, I, I want to be that. That's, yeah. that's, that's how either how I see myself or it's an aspiration. To have you weird out. And at least the, the worst thing she does is like jet emissions. Like, I feel like at least y'all not like Nicki Minaj uh, fans. Y'all don't have to worry about her marrying a, a sex offender or anything like that. Yeah, not great. Not great. Uh, yeah. Um, Maddie Healy was very problematic. Who was Maddie Healy? Uh, lead singer of 1975. Okay. Um, yeah. Call him Ratty Healy. So what's the what's the uh, the the rundown for the Taylor Swift exes? I know was it Harry Styles? No, it was Jake Gyllenhaal. What's Harry Styles in there? Harry Styles is in there. He's in there. Okay, John Mayer. It's a big bad, mm-hmm. big bad. Um, Which one was the one that was supposed to be like the, the gaslighter? Did she have someone act like him in a music video? Was that Jake Gyllenhaal? Yes, mm-hmm. I believe so. Were any of them good exes, or were they all bad men? Taylor Lautner. Talana is a good ex and a good werewolf Shout and, out to I, and a good friend, I would think, if I had the chance to be friends with him. Mm-hmm. So, all right, enough of this nonsense. We'll talk about Taylor Swift later. All right, turn up. All right. Um, okay, so we got into this a little bit because uh, we're talking about your family and karaoke. So what do you have on repeat right now? Like what, what songs, what bands? What song do I have on repeat? Honestly, I'm dealing with a lot of brain rot right now. Mm. I was born in 1998, so I'm heavily Gen Z, <laughs> straight TikTok songs. Oh my god, I just like feel like I'm just part of me, like Thanos. Like the future is now, old man. <laughs> but, yeah, no. But, uh, a lot of the, a lot of TikTok songs. Um, I'm trying to think what I've been listening to right now. I've been listening to that to the, those uh, Kendrick Lamar discs for a while, mm. like the back and forth. That's been he- that's. That's probably my Taylor Swift right now. I've been heavily indulging in the beef. It's 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 meant a lot to me. It's like a Marvel movie. <laughs> okay, expound on that. So the thing about the thing about this Drake and Kendrick beef is that it's really been carrying on for most of my adolescence. Oh uh, right, right, right. Uh, so I've, the length and complexity and the depth of the beef mm-hmm. universe is comparable to that of the Marvel mm-hmm. uh, franchise. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm 26 and they've been beefing since I was like 15. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? You have slick shots back and forth with each other. And there was a long period of time where Drake seemed like a figure where he could just not fall off. He was, he had all the, he had all the infinity stones. Uh, he was light skinned. He had good hair. He was friends with Lil Wayne. Uh, he acts. <laughs> Uh, he raps, he sings, he's Jewish. 
Like you could not, you could not build a better he music artist. He depicted a handicapable person on TV. He depicted a handicapable person. He has all of them. Now all he needs to do is get the final Infinity Stone and just say he's gay. Just he don't even have to be gay. Just say he's bisexual. And yeah. he'll be Teflon. Yeah. Yep. All right. So fascinating. Mm -hmm. I knew that you were younger than me. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize you were that many years younger than me. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to ask how old you are because I'm a gentleman. I appreciate that. I'm 74. Mm -hmm. um, in, in male to female uh, conversion, uh, I probably am approximately 74 mm -hmm. at at your age, yeah, I would yeah. say. Like, uh, if, at it from if a we, misogynist it, point of view. Well, I mean, if we were cast in a movie mm -hmm. together, um, which will probably happen soon, yeah. I'm imagining, mm -hmm. probably within the next few months, um, I would be the like mother of your love interest, 100%. Okay. See, I wasn't really thinking mother. I was like, I, I, you didn't you didn't give me uh, mother. Like, I don't see you as that old. What I do see you as, like, maybe, is like a... Like a uh, like a guidance counselor who really believes in me and who really thinks I can do better or like a that's so sweet you didn't have to say that oh yeah, yeah. Or, 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 or like or like a fiery baseball coach like uh, what's the like Ted Lasso that's how I see you I see you as Ted Lasso I see you rallying the troops and just bringing your curmudgeon energy or maybe new girl like I, I could see you as in the Zoe Deschanel bag you know what I'm saying Who's another autistic coded character it's Jenna Manic Pixie Pink Dream Girl. Dirt Goblin. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. All right. <laughs> so, I feel like we've covered the music and uh, I love music. Marvel Universe. Any other uh, bands or songs that you're um, particularly into right now? I'll say... I've been I've been actually uh, broadening my horizons. Uh, shout out shout out ninety six X Radio. Make sure y'all go. You know what I'm saying. Follow them on the internet. Um, but I've been listening to them, and so I've been broadening my horizons. I didn't really listen to a lot of rock, but I've been listening to some nineteen seventy five, some Arctic Monkeys. You know what I'm saying. Some Radiohead. Welcome to my world. I'm really like I'm really outside now. You Are you me? sad? I am sad. Do you I'm feel sad, sad sometimes? Do you feel sad listening to that music? I don't feel sad listening to the Arctic Monkeys, but I do feel sad listening to Radiohead. Yeah. But I think they want that. They want every song to sound like something terrible just happened to somebody at the end of the movie, and now the credits are rolling. Too much radio, not enough head. Am I right? Mm hmm. Yeah. More head. Yeah. That's, I think, the general vibe that they give off. I mean, I, I listen to very depressing music. Um, like, you know, like. We're talking like the Smiths, you know, mm -hmm. and I'll just lay face down and moan mm -hmm. um, my sadness. So welcome. Yeah, I welcome to that. My taste in music, I feel like, is basically anything that would have been on an SUV commercial like 15 years ago mm -hmm. is where I just exited the train. Yes. Yeah. So, so, uh I didn't start being around white people until I started doing comedy. <laughs> So now I'm kind of like trying to find like the different Welcome places to of the white, white culture. Side, Welcome to the right? white side. That should be that that you if you <laughs> this that, that should be the podcast name. <laughs> Welcome to the white side. Did I do that right? Yeah, yeah, you did it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm gonna say that. Uh, it's uh, just inviting all kinds of yeah. things to crash down that, upon you gotta, me. You gotta get that back. I've been one. You know what I've been trying to do? I've been trying to get on conservative radio show. Shout out Shep Kelly. I be listening. Shout out, hey, and I'm re I'm even dreaming big. Shout out Sean Hannity. You know what I'm saying? Put me on the show. Let me get. It. I, I think they be knowing that I'm a black man when I call in. I don't get my uh, calls answered, but I'm really trying to get on there. I have a unique uh, perspective, and I feel like we'd have a good conversation. And I'm trying to get that Republican National Convention back. Don't let me get the email. Oh my God, y'all gonna hate me. I, I, I'm. I just. All I can do is just wish you the best of luck. Mm -hmm. And try to be the wind beneath your wings if that opportunity does work out for yes, you. My I can only, yes, I can. I can only. Um, you, you can do it. I believe in you. Thank you. Um, I had a psychologist stop me after one of my shows and ask me if I'd be interested in doing like psychiatry conventions. Mm. <laughs> So figuring out my brand, you know, it's almost like, you know, 
like I just I, the the level of mental illness that I have um, and the fact that I'm so self-aware and can talk so clearly about it. It's basically like like a vet, veterinarian got like a talking puppy mm-hmm. that they could like have at the convention convention to like be like, tell us your lore. <laughs> tell us your experience. Exactly. Um, I like that. You ever think about throwing a showcase in an inpatient facility? Uh, yeah, I kind of did at one point, uh, you know, when I was in there, I've never gone full. I've never gotten fully boarded, gone to doggy daycare before, mm-hmm. but that's different because yes. I get picked up by my owners at the end of the day mm-hmm. and get belly rubs and treats. Yeah. So I've never fully gotten, you know, you know, I was institutionalized before. Well, it's overrated. Isn't that like they gave one dude? I the, didn't realize that people were raving about it to begin with. I guess so. They gave the uh, they uh, they gave one dude like a uh, like a lobotomy shot type thing. Like it wasn't a lobotomy for real, but like they he was. I guess he was tripping. I guess he was hearing something. I guess he was hearing mm-hmm. dogs or something. I don't know what happened. They come in there, they grab him, boom, give him the shot. He walking around like a zombie for for the rest of the time. But other than that, it was fun. I learned how to play dominoes. Uh, they had good snacks. Yeah, uh, I'm surprised you were able to play any games that there were enough pieces in there. Yeah, yeah, no, they had dominoes. And uh, mm-hmm. I mean, we was Must doing be one of those fancy ones. Yeah, we was doing chair yoga. Yeah, yeah, yoga for special populations. Shout out to Parkwood, man. There you go. Actually, not shout out to Parkwood. Uh, <laughs> pulling that back. I'm pulling that back. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't endorse that at all yeah no um i don't know how we got on this this train but i i did not have as fun of an experience um as i wanted to just because my friend who had to do outpatient therapy and then some inpatient therapy befriended someone in his group that thought that he was a wolf and i was really pumped about who i was going to meet and like i was like i want to meet I want to meet somebody who thinks they're a wolf and like none of the people in my group were interesting. Mm -hmm. They were just sad like me. Uh, I will say though, um, the very first time I walked into group setting like group, um, I walk in and it is just filled with black women. Mm -hmm. And I am like this one elder emo, like, Damn, y'all have some, like, ho- y'all have like, some y'all like, like white woman that like sits down and I'm telling you what, like having perspective on your life's problems compared to other people sharing, like by the time yeah. they got to me, they're like, is there anything you want to talk about? And I was like, nope, mm-hmm. my life's great. There's absolutely nothing I want to contribute to this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had a hard time at all. Well, yeah, so. looking at the, uh, like the ladder of like intersectionality, it seems like black women have it the worst. You ever seen White in Exile? I have not, no. You should, you, you should watch that, you should watch that. Uh, you should watch For Color Girls, and you should watch The Color Purple. And yeah. really be in tune with the black woman struggle. Because uh, being black and Texan, I could not imagine being black with vagina on me all the time. Uh, that's, that was a way to construct that sentence. Mm-hmm. That was a choice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I guess I can't imagine being black with vagina on me all the time either. Right. Um, because I, I'm, I take things very literally. Mm-hmm. And you saying that makes it f- seem like it's an external <laughs> source that's yeah. going to be on me all of the time mm-hmm. and I can't I don't want to imagine that that sounds like a sensory nightmare mm-hmm. uh, and illegal probably I imagine um, it would be a sensory nightmare <laughs> this is going great really classy yeah, man, proud I, of us I love comedy man <laughs> shout out Josh man shout out high water comedy Ooh, shout yes. out soul spirits make sure y'all come out what date is it August 26th yes it is um, pull up man um Pull up August 26th, and if you don't come, we're going to rob your grandma. It is not August 26th. It is August 16th. August 16th. But you can still come August 26th as long as it's, I don't feel like doing the math, if we're open. Mm-hmm. Come on down August 26th for come August a delicious 16th. beer. Um, but come August 16th for the mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, okay, so. And we're going to rob you too, Prince Bobo, for not wanting to do, to do the podcast. Yeah. I heard about that. You, yeah. We well, don't like that. 
well, we've you know that he and I already have ancient beef, and I, better I was not see you at Tony's trophy room. Just let me know. I was blackmailed into having him on the set list, anyways. Hmm. We gotta do something about that. Who does he think he is? Just because you're six eight doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want to, Prince Bobo. It kind of does. It does actually. I'm a I'm a I'm a tall lady, and and he. Um, are you a tall lady? Yeah. How tall are you? Uh, five nine. Okay. Well, actually, I'm five ten and a half on one leg. Uh, I'm kind of put together like one yeah, of those like. Legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of put together like one of those jangly Halloween skeletons That's funny make, making my way through life. Yeah. You should have talk, talked about that. Everybody's like, yeah, I've been having all these problems. Yeah, my, I had three baby daddies, and uh, they be throwing the baby in the washing machine sometimes. And then you're like... I actually have one leg that's an inch and a half. I actually have to wear an insert, and I'm being really brave about it. So I should have shared more about that struggle. Okay. Yeah. It'll probably make you good at breakdancing. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Next time you see me on camera, I it just, will be breakdancing. I, uh, I was just imagining, like, you picking up the short leg and then swinging the long leg under <laughs> it and going in a circle. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry get, to talk about your. Outfit. I would get dis. I would get disqualified, like mm -hmm. for an unfair advantage. Yeah, it's like when the. Uh, but then I could sue, like, because it was like hashtag born this way. Just like steroids. Yeah. No, not at all. Okay, um, what do you think happens when we die? So when we die, I feel like I, I feel like the 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 date that the world ends is set, right? So I feel like if I were to die right now, I would just be floating around, like you, you like you know when you you got something on your eye mm -hmm. and like you see it in the corner of your eye and you look at it, it go away. I feel like we turn into that. And so we just float around and we vibe to the end of eternity or you don't vibe. So, like, I feel like, like, say, for instance, ghosts, I think those are people that weren't vibing. I think those are some people that couldn't let go of where they were. And so they get stuck there. And then everything else is just vibe. I think you just turn into wind uh, until the world actually ends. And then it's time to choose, like, where you're going to go. <sighs> I, I just have a few questions. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to, you know, like. Don't gaslight like me. I'm, I'm not trying to poke holes in your view of our existence. Okay. Um, and I, I realize that I'm a, I'm a chalant bitch. Mm -hmm. Never been nonchalant day in my entire life. Never been chill. Mm -hmm. Never had access to it. That's not a setting that's available to me. Mm -hmm. But I, there are not that many ghosts. So you arguing that makes it seem like most people would just die and accept being. Yeah. You wouldn't? Because that seems like a good deal to me. I don't accept anything. Like, I, I'm well, You'd be a ghost. <laughs> yeah. Kind of already. There you go. Kind of already am. Rocking. Isn't that a Taylor Swift rock, album? Um, Haunted is a Taylor Swift song. Okay. Should I have a song called Ghost or something? Um, well, I would say, like, Folklore and Evermore are. Mm -hmm. uh, Those are two different albums. Like, a little more. And then the Tortured Poets Department, mm -hmm. uh, she does have a lyric about her and her ghost. So she's kind of like the uh, the 50 cent of folk pop, right? Because like she's she's this uh, towering figure, especially like towards the men that she dates, because you know, like if you cross Taylor, you know what I'm saying? It's not going to be cute for you in them streets. She going to drop that ether on you. You feel me? So she, I feel like she would do well in like battle rap. I think, I think white women should figure out how to implement battle rap into pop music. Um, because if you look at it, like, they, they grab everything else. Look at Bing Hampton. Oh, my God. White women are tearing Bing Hampton up. North Memphis is wild right now. I saw a hot Pilates gym on Chelsea. Chelsea Ave, y'all doing Pilates over there? <laughs> they they drinking coffee. They feeding dogs. I don't like it. But You don't like that they're feeding dogs? I don't like that they're feeding dogs over there. You know, I actually just came back from uh, St. Lucia recently, and I really enjoy the way that uh, Caribbean people treat animals. They treat dogs like animals. That's how they should. They're not be animals. Like and like like they're uh, angels. No 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 like I don't like. I don't this like is my a, dog's 
Underbite. See, nah. I Mark of the beast. I don't like a dog coming around, you know what I'm saying, wanting affection, wanting to, like, don't, like, a, a dog shouldn't try to dap me up. A dog should stay in a dog's place. I feel like a dog should be like the help. Like, I feel like a dog shouldn't make eye contact with people. They need to be outside. They need to just be happy that they don't have to hunt for their own food. You know what I mean? You ever seen a dog? Dogs are very presumptuous now. Like though, like I, like sometimes I'll be at people's house and like the dog will like you if you sitting like this, the dog will use its snout or its nose to like mm, you on the elbow, like hey, pet me. Like how? Who do you think you are? Uh, affectionate, loving, gift of a presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. It's terrible. See, like my my thing you're the is the worst person I've ever met. How can you feel that way? Do you think that uh, after? You know, we fought for civil rights and to be able to go into whatever place we wanted to. Do you, th do you how long do you think it took for us to realize that white people be letting dogs in the kitchen? Do you think it was like immediate or do you think like it, it, it had, we had to wait to like the 70s to like vibe with the white people to really understand the culture? Or do you think it happened like immediately in 1965 with the Civil Rights Act? I don't know. Um, again, I don't really understand any culture mm -hmm. or social interactions mm -hmm. or emotional attachment in general. So mm -hmm. I can't, I'm not qualified. emotionally attached to the dogs a little I'm bit. I'm not qualified you to, um, yeah, no, they're not people, which means they're worthy of love um, mm -hmm. and safe to love. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Goose is a, is a Jim Henson Muppet studio reject and he's given me nothing but joy mm -hmm. and love. What kind of dog is juice? I mean, you're a goose. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, Goose Newton. Uh, he has a last name? No, actually, so his full name is Gooseus Archibald Whiteside. I don't respect that. Um, I don't respect you anymore. Um, <laughs> and that concludes uh, this show. <laughs> it's not going to happen anymore, actually. We're, we're canceling it now. It's not. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a dog ally, but I just feel like they should I stay don't in their think place. You are. I um, if I see okay, that. how many people have been like, you You can be gay, just like, don't do it in front of me. Like, you were just like, I'm a dog ally, but stay, no, mm-mm, no. Well, no, you can, be, you can be a dog in front of me, just don't ask me to treat you like a citizen. Don't act like a dog. Yeah, no, no, act like a, act, act like a dog. But no, don't think. Don't, don't expect things. That was poignantly, succinctly put. I like to see a dog hungry. I like to see a dog, you know what I'm saying, walking around being active, like kill some bugs. Like I rock with cats because a cat will kill a rat. A dog just be barking at the door. It's a very interesting stance for but you to take. cats get too much free will, though. Yeah, I do believe my cat would murder me, would have already murdered me if he was strong enough to mm -hmm. and had the means and tools um, so yeah, I don't like an animal with dignity. That's the issue. That's why we get along. Mm -hmm. Right. Gotcha. We do get along. Yeah. Am I your favorite Midtown comedian? Because I'm an animal without dignity. But besides, besides Prince Bobo and, and Ben Pierce, who will be at the show on August 16th at Souls and Spirits Brewery. Am I your favorite Midtown comedian? Um... That's a tough question. Is it? Yeah. I don't want to answer that. Okay. Because I'm a lover girl and people get mean. You mean. just said you, were, you, were, you, 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 you don't do emotional attachment. Now you're a lover No, girl. I do it. Just mm -hmm. wrong. Okay. Completely wrong. Because this is what happens. Like someone is like, I want to be close to you. I think you're cool. And I'm like, better understood as a concept, buddy. Mm -hmm. Just do us both a favor and keep walking. Mm -hmm. And then they don't. And they stay long enough for me to feel safe. And then, like, I'm like, okay, mm. I made you soup. You know you know what's a real problem with me? When women tell me something like that, I, I, I see that as a challenge. I see that as, no, I can fix her. Is that misogynistic? Is that chauvinism? I mean, yes. Okay. But probably prevalently more something else other than that because because women do that too obviously okay. like the project mm -hmm. right you know 
Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm not like a, I'm not like a DIY level. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, so I am a lover girl and if I were to pick people and say people, then there'd be fallout and I would cry. Mm. See, I'm, 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 I'm doing better now with, uh, not caring about fallout because I am a, a people pleaser at heart. I'm a true people pleaser and I'm, and I'm actively working to fight against that. So what I've been trying to do is, uh, uh, garner as much confrontation as I, as I, as, as humanly possible. Like at, at, at every turn, I'm trying to figure out how to be at odds with people just so I can learn how to, uh, how to do that. So I'd be able to tell you if you were my favorite Midtown, uh, like, are you my favorite? I think you're my favorite white woman comedian. I think you might be my favorite white woman, period. Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on, let me make sure I'm not lying. Like the white woman that I know in person. Because I never had a conversation with a white woman for longer than a minute that wasn't my coworker until I started doing comedy. Um, so I know a few now. Uh, shout out Allison MacArthur. Shout out, uh, shout out Keely Allison. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, do I know some other white women? That's crazy. Yeah, I'm a girl's girl, but you can wrap it up and say I'm your favorite. Yeah, Just yeah, go okay, ahead. okay. okay. I'm your, cool. You're my favorite. Thank you. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm sorry. That's rude. Yeah, yeah. Say that about me. So, all right. Um, what else do you have in the docket? What else do you have on the docket right now that you want to promote and talk about? Oh, you know what I'm saying? I got Growlers on August 3rd. Uh, make sure y'all come out every Tuesday for High Tone Comedy. You know what I'm saying? We do an open mic over there. Real live stand-up comedy. Let me, let me, is this, is, is this camera on me? Listen, I need y'all to do comedy in real life. All that stuff on the internet. Oh, I'm doing skits. I'm wearing a wig. I'm acting like a woman. You know, blah, 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 blah. That's cute. I feel you. I feel like clout. Clout is worse than crack. I feel like right now we're living in the clout era. So people doing whatever they need to do for the clout. And I understand that because of a tree falls. It's not like it's I don't understand any of this. Clout or crack? I, I don't understand. I need, Listen, you, to, I need you to explain it to me like I'm a 73 year old. So, so here, here's the thing. Clout mm -hmm. is basically um, rec recognition. I know the definition of Tom's that. power. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. And so the crack epidemic came into the black community and people stopped caring about each other or caring about how they present themselves because they now don't need to have a level of professionalism or a level of um, respect for their craft because ain't no respect in a crack game. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you destroying families, you pushing it out in the street, right? And so clout is doing the same thing. So like what crack did to hip hop in the nineties and did to the black community, clout is now doing that to young men now. So comedy is turning into hip hop in the nineties. You know what I'm saying? People don't really have the respect for it. Go up on stage. I'm tired of y'all. I'm get on the stage and make some jokes. Pull up to the hot home every Tuesday. Pull up August third at the Growlers and see me do it. Pull up August 16th at Souls and Spirit and see us do it. You know why? Because we outside. Because that's where we're supposed to be. That's where we need to be. The people deserve a show. It's true. And stand-up comedy is one of those things, comedy in general is one of those things that you can't get better without an audience. Sex. It's not like a you know, you can just like practice your instrument mm -hmm. uh, alone in your room and then come out better. People don't realize that they think they think stand up comedy is as easy as having a joke. Because, you know, people have these conversations. Oh, I got 15 minutes. I got 30 minutes. I got an hour. People uh, are most of the time just counting the things they have to talk about. I can't I can't tell you how many times I've seen somebody go on stage and just be telling, you know, a story or. Uh, I don't, do I want to ruffle feathers? I do want to ruffle feathers. Stop going on stage with your notebook, unless it's your first time doing comedy. I understand looking at the notebook at first, or maybe maybe even in between jokes, put it on the stool, have some respect for yourself. But looking down at your notes when you're supposed to be saying the punchline, I saw somebody the other day, they looked at their notes, and then they said, and then I bit him. I'm like, you have to look at the notes for that? <laughs> 
Yeah. You didn't, you didn't know that. You didn't know that you bit him at the end of that story. But it goes with people not having respect for the cloud, for the for the for the craft. Mm-hmm. People just want to hop on stage. People just want to be famous. When social media started paying people to be on social media, the streets was done. Mm. Like it was it was nothing else we could do. But how was your day? Um it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Got got my nails done. Mm-hmm. I think this is called lucky lucky mint, but it's more of a blue. Mm-hmm. Looked greener in the bottle. Um and I started Shorzy. What's that? Uh it's a <laughs> it is a um spin-off of Letterkenny. Okay. And uh, it's about a hockey team in okay. Canada. All right. Um, my friend convinced me to give it a try, and I'm glad that I did. Uh, the way that she convinced me, as she convinces me with a lot of things, is that there's apparently a lot of very good hockey smut books out there. Hmm. Um, so, like, if I get connected to hockey, then that's another level of smut that is uh, unlocked for me. Are I, you Canadian? No. Okay. No. Have you, did you spend a lot of time in Wisconsin? No. Because now that you bring up hockey, I'm starting to pick up the hockey vibes on you. Like I'm starting to pick up real, you know, you know what I'm starting to pick up? Are you picking up bisexual vibes? Not bisexual (laughs) vibes. You might be, you might be bisexual vibes, but I'm thinking more so, you know, you know, the character on the, on the, on the, on the eighties movie where they like, oh yeah, we really rock, rock with her. That's the homie. And then at the end of the movie, she pop out in a prom dress and they'd be like, oh, she had a vagina on her this whole time. That's kind of like the vibe you give me. You give me like a, a real cool lady. Um, and you just down, you just down, down with the arts. It might be the hat. Yeah. I'm going to be impossible to live with after this. Mm-hmm. You're being much too kind to me. I don't know. Um, we need, I, we, I've never considered myself to be cool. Jana Wasa, I, don't I don't plan on starting now. I don't think you understand how much Memphis comedy needs you. Not the comic under, that they need, I don't think you understand but the comic they deserve. Exactly. You need to be unapologetically yourself because somebody is waiting for you to be yourself. Somebody doesn't know that you exist. Somebody doesn't know that the things that you talk about and the brand you carry and the way in which you carry yourself directly can inspire them and make them want to be themselves. We need you. And I don't think you know that. I don't think people tell you that. Hmm. The guidance counselee has become the guidance counselor. Come on now. Full circle. Mm-hmm. Well, I am doing the girls' gays and days. You were there. I was at the girls' gays and days. Shout out to the girls' gays and days. You know what I told everybody when I got to the Madison Tavern mic at the end of the night? What'd you say? The winter is coming. The winter? The winter. Winter. Yes. Gotcha. I was like, yes. Because I was like, okay, y'all got like a real community in there and they really want to do stand up comedy. They're working, they're writing. They, you know what I'm saying? They, they outside, they getting they, you know what I'm saying? They they getting it out, and if y'all pull up in mass the way y'all do at the girls' days and days, y'all gonna take off. Because listen, when I go to other cities, you know what I'm saying, the New Yorks, the Denvers, the Chicago's, the LAs, the comedy scene is controlled by women and queers of your ilk, like just quirky, quirky like improv type. You know what I'm saying, white women and white days. Mm. But I feel like here we're not as college educated. So it's not as many of you in so y'all y'all can't really take over which y'all y'all need to. Like y'all be y'all just be letting Allison MacArthur carry the carry the flag. And she been doing it for a minute. Shout out Allison MacArthur. Don't play with her. If you play with Allison MacArthur, you gotta deal with both of us and you gotta deal with Josh. But shout out, shout out, shout out to you. Shout out to women doing comedy. I need y'all to come out and save me from going to the hot song open mic every week and seeing the same 20 men. It's, it's sometimes it's, it's like a clan rally in there. I know. <sighs> Too much sausage, not enough eggs. Too much sausage, not enough eggs. Yeah, yeah, feel that, feel that. Um, well, I think that probably comes close to. I don't. I don't want to keep more of your time. I know uh, that you've got very important things to attend to. Um, really appreciate you carving out time. Um, super excited for the show, um, and I guess I would like to end by asking you mm-hmm. if you had to describe your comic voice. 
or your stand up in th- in three words or less? I'm a brash uppity nigga. All right. I mean that's what that's what my tour is gonna be called actually. Like once once I get the tour off, it's gonna be the brash uppity nigga tour. You know what I'm saying? We gonna sell pens to people because we appreciate the scent. We just want you to write a complaint on a piece of paper and then give it to us so that we can all really just come together and talk about what we're not happy with and just pop out and show niggas. Mm. All right. Well, you heard it from him. I'm not repeating. No, you heard it from Jana too. Yes. Jana yes. approves this message. Is this camera on me? It's Jana. Jana Whiteside. Yeah. Souls and Spirits Brewery. Yes. August 16th. August 16th. Two days before my, my birthday. No surprise, I'm a Leo. Wow. <laughs> I, 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 I never know uh, what's the difference. Big fire sign energy. Okay, that's fire. All right, bet, bet, bet. Yeah. I never know what the vibes are with each zodiac sign. Anytime somebody tells me there's a zodiac sign, I just go, what? Well, Leos are the best. Okay. And Aquarius men can all die. Just kidding. How about I don't Gemini mean men? that. I feel, like, I feel like if I say any zodiac sign and end it with men, you're gonna be like, uh, I don't like it. <laughs> it's not true. There are a few. There are okay. a few. I'll give. What's your favorite uh, zodiac sign for a man? Uh, Cancer. Yeah. Say that's my favorite. I um only dated one Cancer uh guy, mm-hmm. and he was a good one. Josh, what are you? Oh, Scorpio, Scorpio man, bad. Watch out for that tails. Okay, yeah, that's bad. I knew. Yeah, My best friend one. is a Scorpio, and she kind of resents some of the uh, stereotypes about their sign. I mean, yes, yeah, it's all just space racism, but everybody got to deal with that. What's your sign? Gemini. Gemini. That's why you asked. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Um, well, I guess I'm gonna wrap this up, and uh, my second. We'll call upon your second. I mean, let me get. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. All right, y'all. Take care. Have a good day. Is this camera on me? <laughs>